everybody. I have Eladio Sharon here. Um, so how are you? Where are you? I am here in Orlando. Yes. Yes, I live in the southern part of Orlando. Yeah. yeah. And so how have you been faring in this weird time? <laughs> well, you know, it's, we have time to practice, to reflect, you know, and then uh, try to, uh, we try to uh, imagine what's going to happen in the future, trying to adapt. Uh, with the technology, of course, there are some things that we can do and other things that we can't do. As a, as a classical guitar player, of course, uh, uh, it's easier for me to do things, uh, to plan on, you know, even virtual concerts or recordings and things like that. Yeah. For orchestra, that's another story, but. Exactly. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about the concert that people are about to see. Uh, on Sunday. Uh, so let me see if I remember very well. Uh, I, it was a mixture of things. I did some solo pieces. I believe uh, it was the Villalobos Preludes or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then and, you, uh, you played with Chris a couple of pieces and different. Yeah, pieces. I think I did. Did I do the Wrist People piece? The homage to Villalobos. Yeah, I think so. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And one more. And then you also played uh, songs with the singer. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so um, I, I did the preludes, the five preludes by Villalobos uh, that were written in the 1940s. Ito Villalobos, the great uh, Brazilian uh, composer. Um, and also I did that, that piece, if I am not mistaken, because I don't have the program with me, uh, the uh, Homage to Villalobos by uh, Antonio Ruiz Pipo. That's a, a piece for two guitars and uh, that he composed while I was still living in Paris a long, 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 long time ago, last century, let's say. Um, and then um, there was also a piece by, um, Jorge Morel, an Argentinian composer. I think we played that on second uh, half. And that was with Carrie Wissinger uh, on, on the flute. And that was a piece that uh, was commissioned by us. Um, and uh, that was about the first performance, the first time we did that piece. Yeah, and Mr. Morel, was, Mr. Morel was in attendance, if I remember correctly. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Jorge Morel, uh, is a, a guitarist composer, uh, very famous, uh, had a, a big career, uh, you, doing a lot of crossover, what we call now crossover, uh, um, with the South American uh, popular music, even arrangements of, uh, of uh, American music uh, like uh, Gershwin or uh, Bernstein has beautiful arrangement of uh, three of the songs from West Side Story uh and many other things so so he's been active uh, since the 1960s and uh, about 10 years or so ago he retired and, and came to live in orlando he spent most of his life in new york so um he already did a piece for a solo piece for for me that i included in a recording that i did a few years ago uh, in the recording where uh, also carrie wissinger participated but the, because there was also a, a, a duet part and uh, so I asked him for a, a, a flute and guitar piece a couple of years ago. And that was the result of that piece. Originally, he did like two movements. And I told him, Jorge, why don't you do the third movement? I, it's going to look better, maybe a, a prelude or something. And, and uh, at the end, we have a, a piece of about 15, 15 minutes or so. Beautiful piece. Um, uh, uh, Triptico Latino, that's the title of that, uh, that piece. And uh, that uh, use uh, Argentinian folkloric rhythms, uh, especially on the second and third movements, the rhythms of uh, the milonga and uh, uh, malambo a little bit in his own style. He's a really uh, quite uh, refined composer. Uh, um, it's not just uh, music uh, to just entertain but there's a, a real composer effort there really refined yeah and I, I, would, I, I know that uh, personally as a composer uh, amateur composer mind you 
uh, but like the people I, I write for, when yes. I, I write for a specific person, they have vastly influenced the result, such as adding a movement. It's happened to me before uh -huh. and things yeah. like that. So I'd like you to talk uh, because a lot of people sometimes don't realize the importance of the performer in that relationship between the composer and the performer when the key, the piece is being created. And I, I know that you've had uh, a few pieces uh, written for you and how much influence did that, did you have on the result? Like that's interesting to me. Well, <laughs> it's complicated, but it depends on the composer. In the case of Jorge, um, there's a piece that he did for solo guitar that I, I, uh, I like very much. I uh, forgot the name. It's uh, Danza del Sur, if I'm not mistaken. And I had never played that piece, but uh, I, I thought it had a very nice uh, rhythm. And uh, he used a little element of that piece of the third movement, if I am not uh, mistaken. And, uh, but not, not that much. I mean, he went his own way. You know, uh, uh, the case of Jorge is very interesting because I think uh, in the last 10 years or so, he has uh, uh, experienced uh, like an explosion of creativity, and uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, quite amazing in a, in a musician and composer of more than 80 years old. But in the last few years, he has composed uh, a lot. And I, of course, I've been from one of solo pieces and then this, uh, uh, this piece. Another composer that uh, we didn't play in that concert in, in particular, but I think we did in another concert with uh, Kari is uh, Alberto Rodriguez Ortiz. I think we did his uh, 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 piece for flute and guitar, Héroes. And that one, uh, Alberto was my student more than 25 years ago at the University of Puerto Rico. And uh, uh, when I went to do my doctorate at the Simon School of Music, he just followed the following year and did his master's. And then uh, I lived many years in France uh, and uh, I also studied over there and worked over there. And so Alberto, after finishing uh, his uh, years at Eastman, then went for about three years to France, to Paris, and even studied with my guitar professor I started with someone, Yoshihira uh, um, uh, Taira, uh, one of the uh, composition professors at the École Normale. So he did the, the uh, path similar to mine, but uh, you know, in inverted direction. And uh, in the case of Héroes, uh, of course, uh, uh, I gave him an idea on what could be the title or maybe what could be uh, a source of inspiration for a possible program. It's not that I was pushing for a programmatic piece, but uh, in that particular case, uh, it had to do with uh, uh, the experience of a political prisoner. I'm not going to go into the details because that's not what you, uh, our audience will listen on, on, on Sunday. But you know, it's just a collaboration. It's, it's just a, a suggestion of it. And then, the composer has uh, his or her her own mind, uh, of course. Yeah, Another that's piece. Very, that's, that's, very yeah. that's very interesting. I've always uh, been interested in that over, you know, history of music. Uh, there's a lot of examples of that where, you know, whether uh, the, the performer for whom the music was intended was actively involved in shaping the music or 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 not. Like it does. Like when you write for somebody in particular, there's a lot like you know that person enough that played the playing and the person and you, you know, as a composer, you'll 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 do a lot of things that you might do. You, you'll do different things that you might normally do. And then the other aspect that I find very interesting for you, especially because you've been teaching for a long time, is the relationship you develop with your students. Yes. And and then and then what happens also when they start composing music, because then. Uh, and, and and even if they don't like just as 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 players as you see like you you know there's a lot of uh, like these uh, hard to define influences that go one way and easier to define influences that go the other way from the teacher to the student and yes. then oftentimes there's more subtle influences that go from the student back to the teacher 
Um, yeah. Whether in in the in the immediate, like as as it goes, as you read, you know, develop the, your student teacher relationship, or years afterwards, and uh, I find that those all those relationships very fa fascinating, and it's something that we don't see a lot in literature, in in movies, and you know, like or or really in anything except the the music itself. Like if you uh, study the music closely enough, you will oftentimes see these relationships and how, how complex they can be and how back and forth it goes. I find that very fascinating. Well, I, I think so, sometimes what the uh, interpreter, uh, the, the performer uh, does at, I would say uh, at, uh, at its best is uh, to give some inspiration, some idea that may inspire the, uh, the composer. I think a good composer, of course, uh, all good composers will follow the, their own uh, tendencies. And uh, I, there's the case uh, in guitar history with uh, Andres Segovia and uh, the Mexican Manuel Ponce that I know, I mean, I know his music very well because I'm working on the whole uh, recording. I'm recording everything, so, and, uh, but, you know, sometimes Segovia would, and this is during the 1920s in Paris, you know, mid to end of the 1920s, and Segovia would give uh, a request to Ponce, would ask Ponce for a piece. And you know, let's do a piece with this and that, you know, the, the, in the case of the variations of the folia, he asked for specific things in some variations. Now, uh, I think that Ponce uh, uh, was not just to try, trying to place him, but I think he would embrace the idea and then work on it and do something uh, uh, magnificent, right? And so it works sometimes like that. In the case of Alberto Rodriguez, for example, uh, he uh, did a concerto for guitar and orchestra that I uh, premiered uh, three years ago, just before the hurricane hit Puerto Rico, uh, like the May before. And uh, yes, uh, sometimes there are little things here and there. Although Alberto is a guitar player, uh, I have more experience, so I may, I told him, listen, maybe this harmonic is better to write it in this way better and so on and so forth. Uh, small things li uh, like that. You know, sometimes uh, we get angry because uh, we may work on a passage and it will not work because it's damn difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes we get frustrated, and, you know, that's not possible. And then uh, afterward, uh, it becomes uh, more natural and, uh, and then we get the idea and we get to to use our creativity to do something more uh, uh, fluid. Fantastic. Yes. So how did you build the program? Well, I was working with several people uh, at, um, almost at the same time. It's I think we're doing also, I don't think we did that concert, but we did some of the Manuel de Falla songs uh, uh, with uh, Alexandra. Um, and uh, I did the Sephardic song with Alexander that, uh, uh, that have a um, uh, flute in a couple of the songs. So in Spanish, uh, combined. Well, Eladio, uh, I've lost you, but uh, everybody just go to uh, timuqua.com slash events uh, or you can go to uh, the Timqua Arts Foundation page on Facebook um, and then you'll find all the information there. The concert is Sunday at 7 30 p.m. It was a very interesting concert. The songs with Alexandra were particularly um, funny and, and, and fun and so you want to check those out. So thank you very much Eladio for speaking with me and uh, I hope everybody uh, watches that concert on Sunday. Thanks, guys.